I've had an on and off relationship with Lord of the Rings Online pretty much since it first released all the way back in April of 2007. That's a long time. And whereas I've always enjoyed Lotro, it definitely hasn't ever been what I'd call my main game. That's always been World of Warcraft, and then later Final Fantasy XIV, both of which are games I've spent thousands of hours in, in which I think are great in their own right. There's no doubt that in 2024, Lotro is lagging behind these behemoths of the MMO genre in terms of player count and sadly probably funding as well, but the fact remains that even after all these years, Lord of the Rings Online is still around. And there's a reason for that. Every now and again I see a video pop up on my YouTube recommended, which is along the lines of Lotro as a new player, or would I recommend this game to others? These videos often pick up on some problems that Lotro has which are definitely hard to ignore. On busy days the lag and rubber banding is so bad that it feels like it really is impossible to walk into Mordor, the UI looks like it was made in 1980 and hasn't been thought about since, and some of the in-game cash shop systems are so egregiously bad examples of predatory game design that it's almost laughable. Lotro has a lot of issues, and I'm sure I could make a video about all of those today too, but that's not why we're here. I just can't help thinking that after all this time, there's just something special about this game. I sat down for a while and tried to put my finger on it, and I just wanted to take the time in this video to gloss over and forget any issues that Lotro might have, and to give you guys my four reasons why I think Lotro is still thriving, and how it does these things as well as, if not better than any other game in the genre. The first and possibly most interesting thing that I wanted to talk about is that Lotro has shown in a variety of different patches, and even an expansion, that as a game they're willing to develop and release new content which is solely aimed at either low or mid level players, and which isn't focused on the end game content like raids or pvp whatsoever. Now as a player of other MMOs this concept seems almost foreign to me. The thought of someone like Blizzard or Square Enix making and then trying to market the main feature of a patch as a low level questing zone is almost comical. It just wouldn't really work well for either game, and whereas yes, there are examples of new low level content being made such as Exile's Reach in World of Warcraft, that was never really marketed as the flagship feature of the content patch itself. In Lotro however, there are plenty of examples of this. For example, Update 33, The Yondershire was released on April the 20th 2022, and introduced a new region of the same name which was slightly to the north of the original Shire zone, and aimed at characters around the level 20 to 23 range. The zone was included for free to anyone subscribed to the game as a VIP, but could also be purchased separately as a one-off in the in-game Lotro store. Now as you can see from the footage, Yondash is a really pretty zone, which to any lover of the Lord of the Rings franchise really jumps out as being the Shire. The zone was full of all the usual things you might expect to find in a patch zone such as a large selection of new quests, a reputation with some attached cosmetics, and plenty of other things to do, and that's great. Likewise, the so called mini expansion before the shadow departed from the usual formula for an MMO expansion entirely. There was no new selection of max level zones, with standing stone games instead choosing to completely rework the new player's starting experience by introducing the zones of Swanfleet and Cardolan. Before the shadow didn't completely skip out on level capped characters, a 6 party instance and skirmish were added, but in the main this was a mostly story based content update telling the tale of Boromir making his way north to Rivendell prior to the events of the Fellowship of the Ring. Having played through this content myself, it was honestly pretty fun to have that additional context fleshed out in the tale of one of the Fellowship of the Ring, and I found it to be a good motivation to go back and level up a couple of ults that I'd been putting off, just because I didn't want to do Arid Luin for the 50th time. In all honesty, Before the Shadow didn't really take that long, but it definitely does have replay value in the future for other alts, and I think Swanfleet and Cardolan definitely stand as an improvement to the original starting zones that were added all the way back at the start of the game. I think standing stone games are really clever in normalising the adding of lower and mid level content, because it shows that they really understand their player base and what matters to them. When I play World of Warcraft, I log in, I open the group finder, and I tend to run mythic plus keys to fill up my great vaults, or I raid with my friends. I'm not really that interested in going back and levelling up another alt in another levelling zone, because blizzards compress the process to be so short now that it really doesn't feel like it means anything. Lotro is different though. Lotro is about the journey rather than the destination, and both the player base and the developer know this. Whereas Lotro is an MMO, I think the gameplay loop is very different to other more modern MMOs, and it appeals to a different kind of player. Some people might criticise Lotro for this, which is understandable. Sure, 
There aren't as many endgame raids, dungeons and similar as you might find in World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV, but there is a vibrant and alive world which does an amazing job at making you feel like you're walking around Middle Earth. Lotro is a canvas for those who want to experience Middle Earth and its story, rather than just collect loot fast and optimise their character. Sure, you can do that in Lotro, and there are plenty of those players around. I like doing that too. But in the main, Lotro caters to a slower and more laid back pace of play than other MMOs, and that's great. Standing Stone Games recognises this, and I think it's a positive sign that they're able to develop content for their player base that's relevant to people at a different place in their journey, be that level 1, or the now somewhat intimidating level 150. I think there is certainly criticism to be levelled at Standing Stone Games in respect of the speed at which they release content, and I'm aware that the release of the recent Corsairs of Umbar expansion certainly didn't go without hiccup. But for the most part, and as a story enjoyer, I really do appreciate some of the design decisions that have been made in Lotro over the past couple of years. My next point is a bit of a shorter one, but I actually think it's super important, and isn't really something that I've seen too often in other MMOs. So a lot of the time when I'm wandering around a zone, things can feel a little small in scale, and self-contained, and I definitely think that can have a negative impact on just the general vibe of things. The footage here for instance is from Mount Hyjal in World of Warcraft, which is a cataclysm zone. I think in general the zone is great, and I actually had a really great time here back in the day, but what I do feel is missing is a bit of just that sense of scale. I think some of that comes from the design itself, and some of it also comes from just view distance and what's actually visible. Again, here's another zone, Kunlai Summit in Pandaria. I don't want to criticise the zone as I think it's great, but this zone is supposed to be all about the huge mountain, and it still just feels a little bit scaled down to me. To contrast this, here's a landscape from Lotro which I recorded in the Dimrul Vale. What really makes me feel immersed here is even though the graphics are old and generally not that great, it's the fact that everything just feels huge. The mountain in the distance is huge. It takes ages to get anywhere, and I generally just get the vibe that I'm wandering around in a living world, rather than just a game zone. As another example, here's Imladris. You can see Rivendell off in the distance, but the scale of everything is just so grand and large that it really feels like I'm entering a huge valley, rather than just heading 10 seconds to the next objective. I think there's something to be said in more traditional MMOs about the way the world manages to remain feeling sizeable and meaningful, as opposed to everything ended up being shrunk by proxy due to the availability of things like portals, fast travel, and especially flying mounts. There's probably a much bigger conversation for another time to be had here, and I definitely don't resent those other things existing in games. They're great a lot of the time, and fast travel does exist in Lotro. There's just something special about an MMO feeling just that though, massive. And I have to say I'm glad that Lotro has never, at least not yet, bitten the bullet and introduced flying mounts, as I think it helps add to the magic of what Middle Earth is today. So semi-recently Amazon Games issued a statement that they're going to be making a new MMO set in the Lord of the Rings universe. Obviously this caused a fair amount of concern within the Lotro community, which resulted in a statement being issued by Standing Stone Games explaining that although people might be concerned, Lotro wasn't going anywhere. Now, over the course of its lifespan, Lotro has always received a lot of well-deserved praise for the fact that as much as can be expected, the game tries very hard to fit in with and be respectful of the original Tolkien lore. Of course, in building a huge MMO, there have been some embellishments, and there are certain things like the Runekeeper class and various parts of the world which are pushing the boundaries a bit. For instance, the recent zone of Swanfleet never really received a great deal of fleshing out by Tolkien, so the developers at Standing Stone Games have had to do their best to visualise the details of what is actually quite a large in-game zone. I think this is to be expected though, and as a lifelong fan of Tolkien and his work, you can really tell that SSG care about the lore and the world, and want to be respectful of that. I remember that shortly after the release of Before the Shadow, I watched an interview on YouTube with the developers where they talked about their research and planning process for new content when it comes to lore. I was genuinely impressed at just how much prior research went into everything. Conversely, and this is why I brought it up, I'm just not sure that the Amazon Lord of the Rings game is going to have the same mindset or vibe. When giving an interview about their new project, Amazon executive Christoph Hartman seemed to be of the opinion that when their game was released, people would just move over, and to me, this just illustrates that he doesn't really get it. People don't love Lotro because it's built in Unreal Engine 5 and has fancy graphics. 
They don't love Lotro because it's top of the sales charts and popular, nor because the combat is fast paced and feels modern. That's not Lotro. What Lotro is, however, is a gateway into the Tolkien world that people have now invested themselves in for many, many years. It's a game where people feel like they can learn about Tolkien and have their time respected, and I honestly think Lotro does this extremely well. It remains to be seen what will happen with the Amazon game, but one thing is for sure, you cannot buy the loyalty of the Lotro fanbase with a quick graphical update and some flashy advertising. This is definitely a more recent addition to Lotro, but I actually think it's also super important and that's why I wanted to end the video with this. Landscape difficulty is a feature which sees you being able to talk to an NPC called the Hardened Traveller who, depending on what you decide, will increase the difficulty of the NPCs in the open world and solo or duo missions. On a tier of 1 to 9, the game will get harder and enact effects such as making you deal decreased damage, take increased damage and trigger additional effects on enemy targets. Now, I have to admit that as an enjoyer of Lotro's chill vibes, I'm not really into this feature myself, and I haven't really felt the need to play around with it that much. However, it isn't really something that I've encountered in any of the other MMOs that I play, and I think it really is a great introduction for those that want to give themselves just that little bit of extra challenge or just shake things up a little bit. By selecting the relevant difficulty before your character reaches level 11, this can give you the chance to earn unique titles when you reach a specific level bracket and earn the achievement. Whilst there isn't really much further benefit to it than this, it shows that Lotro is willing to try new things and let people play the game that they want to. It could definitely lead to some really interesting challenges in the future such as hardcore Lotro attempts at the highest landscape difficulty bracket, and I would be interested to see whether SSG build upon this feature going forward by adding any further additional incentives to play on the harder difficulty settings. There's definitely the interest in this kind of gameplay which has been shown recently by World of Warcraft Hardcore Classic, and I think SSG are really onto a good thing here. That's going to be it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. I really wanted to take the time to highlight Lotro even though it's an older game as I think it's well worth your time. If you're still playing this game, let me know in the comments down below, hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.